welcome to the 8th episode of the series if you have missed the earlier ones please click on the info card in the top right corner and you will be taken to the playlist containing the previous episodes if you have been thinking that i am into some catholic bashing then it is not so wait till you come to know that the protestants have their own share of unbiblical teachings and viewpoints it should not be understood as catholics or orthodox people are a party to the devil they are as godly as the others but they would look more like this or this i do not think they would look anywhere like this or this now coming to evaluating some catholic doctrines which cannot be condemned outright for being anti scriptural it has more than what meets the eye the first one is celibacy celibacy in itself is not condemnable if you have decided it for yourself it becomes problematic only if it's enforced by a different set of people on you had the catholic church been flexible with it then it would never have been an issue we have to understand from the scriptures that most apostles were married whereas paul and barnabas were unmarried it was a personal decision it was never enforced on anybody the second is the doctrine of transubstantiation the doctrine of transubstantiation in itself is not a big problem as you can believe it's the physical body and the blood of christ in accordance with john chapter 6:53 to 56 but at the same time it becomes an issue when you brand someone as heretic for not believing your interpretation of the same scripture the next point which is a bit dicey is about the way we deal with the saints and the mother of jesus the scripture does exhort us to remember them and follow their ways as we see in hebrews chapter 13 verse 17 so it is absolutely fine to celebrate the life of these saints and surely most educated catholics and orthodox adherents will tell you that they are not worshiping these saints but rather just venerating them it's good if it's if it ends with the veneration part however at many point the adherents somehow seems to go beyond the quote unquote veneration things like bowing kneeling prostrating etc gives me an understanding that it is worship and not just veneration in the last episode we understood the life and work of john wickliffe he was instrumental in translating the bible from the latin vulgate to english I have tremendous appreciation for the Catholic Church for holding on to the scriptures without fiddling with its content. Had it been any of the later Protestant leaders, they would have removed many of the contents which was inconvenient to them. For example, Martin Luther would not consider the epistle of James, Jude, and hebrews as valid scriptures just because it conflicted with his doctrines or the doctrines he understood from the book of romans he also hated the book of revelation now let us consider the next important figure in the chat who is an important forerunner to the reformation jan hus commonly known as john hus in english lived in the province of bohemia which is called the czech republic in our time he was a catholic priest and an academician he was born in a poor family and the only reason he became a priest was because he wanted to have some fame and comfort in life which in his days was possible only by becoming a priest that's what he said he was ordained as a priest in the year 1400 after he completed his ma He was a very inspiring preacher and his command over the Czech language made him a rising star. He used to be the constant preacher in the Bethlehem Chapel of the University of Prague. Hus took to the same line of Wycliffe to preach from the scriptures 
and ignore the theological system of the Catholic Church. Because of this, Jan Hus fell out of favor with the Archbishop of Prague. Remember that this was the time when the papal schism was in full flow. At that time, there were three popes fighting for one chair. One of those popes, the Pope from Pisa, also went against Jan Hus's way of teaching and condemned him. After his condemnation, he was excommunicated from the Catholic Church for disobedience. Unlike Wycliffe, he was not at announced as a heretic. By this time, Wycliffe was already dead. Just because of this excommunication, Hus gained a lot of followers among the locals from the Czech. Jan Hus' sermons became more inflammatory and even challenged the Pope for extortion by the sale of indulgences. His followers were generally called as Hussites. The most famous of Hus's treatise is called the De Ecclesia, in which he wrote details about the church and its sacraments. As the controversy got beyond control, the Holy Roman Emperor called for John Hus to come to him so that he can hear him out. He also promised a safe pass for him, which means that he will not be harmed on the way. John Hus thought that this was a great chance to give the reason for his believing according to his faith. However, he was in for a surprise as he was arrested at his arrival and cast into a dungeon. He was never given a chance to present his views and was defrocked and condemned to death as a heretic. He was burned at the stakes and his ashes were thrown into the river. This happened at the Council of Constace where Wycliffe also was declared as a heretic following which his body was exhumed and burned to ashes before it was floated into the river. As the news of his death reached the Hussites in Bohemia, they started a militarized revolt against the Catholic Church and the Holy Roman Emperor. As a result, the Pope sent crusaders to subjugate the Hussites. However, the Pope was in for a surprise. The Hussites were very ferocious and defeated the crusaders and declared independence from the Holy Roman Emperor. Therefore, the first Protestant country that broke the yoke of the Catholic Church is Bohemia, today's Czech Republic. Now, as we continue to the 15th century, we also encounter another Catholic priest by name Girolamo Savanarola. He happened to be a Dominican friar in San Marco. If you remember, I had shown you how a pendulum which is pulled to one side swings to the other side. Similarly, this friar was quite upset with lots of ungodly stuffs going on in the Catholic Church and I feel that he swung to the other side and that incorporated along with him a lot of legalism which we are often seeing in many Baptist and Pentecostal denominations today. He was a very fiery preacher and he wanted to make Florence in Italy the city of God. His message was centered around reformation and repentance. His sermons were mostly futuristic and he used to concentrate more on the first epistle of John and the book of Revelation. Many of his sermons used to allude that the Pope is the future Antichrist. He also ruffled the feathers of many of the political masters in his place. He is remembered mostly for his bonfire of vanities where he burned the works of art. He forbid women from doing makeups and wearing jewelries. He is also prophesied about certain events which would shortly come to pass. When the French invaded Italy, many considered that as a fulfillment of the prophecy. However, I feel it's still debatable. Nevertheless, Savonarola did shake up the Catholic establishment and that caused the Pope to take action on him, which resulted in him being declared a heretic and burned at the stakes along with two others at the same place where he held the bonfire of vanities. Being silent to corruption and showing indifference to ungodliness has been the hallmark of materialistic men. 
to assume that such people are part of the bride of Christ is to give ear to our own ignorance the bride of Christ is still around but not visible to many i would like to remind you god's answer to elijah from romans chapter 11 from verse 3 lord they have killed your prophets and torn down your altars i am the only one left and they are trying to kill me and what was god's answer to him i have reserved for myself 7000 who have not bowed their knee to baal so to at the present time there is a remnant chosen by grace this is the end of our eighth episode if you have liked our content please like it subscribe it and don't forget to click on the bell icon so that you can be notified of our future updates thank you